Welcome to the second of our three videos of worship for Sunday the 10th of July 2022. In this video, uh, Susan is going to read to us from the first part of the letter to the Ephesians and then we're going to think a little bit more about it uh, before nailing our own colours to the mast in a statement of belief. This morning's reading is taken from Colossians chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and Timothy our brother, to the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colos, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all the saints. The faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and that you have already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. All over the world, this gospel is bearing fruit and growing, just as it, is, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who has also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Although scholars have some doubts about who wrote the letter to the Ephesians, there's almost no doubt at all that St Paul wrote the letter to the Colossians. He hadn't actually been to Colossae himself, uh, but uh, the letter has obviously got a close resemblance to the letter to Philemon, which he also wrote, uh, which was a personal letter about someone who was dear to him. And there's no doubt that St Paul wrote Philemon. Uh, you can tell by the number of personal things that there are which refer uh, to the things which were going on in Paul's life. And so uh, there is little doubt that Paul wrote the letter to the Colossians. He has heard about their faith. Uh, what does he want to say to them? Uh, well, uh, it's about the transfer, isn't it? I wonder if you, like me, uh, have got the experience of not being quite good enough for the school football team. Uh, as I was going through primary school, I was always about halfway up the class as far as sports abilities goes, and that meant that when they were picking teams, uh, I was always one of the people who might possibly get picked right at the end, uh, when they'd come to the end of the 11 that they wanted, uh, and uh, they had to choose among the also-runs uh, who would fill the last place. I found it very dispiriting. Uh, nobody really wanted me on their team. Uh, I was no better uh, than any of the other dregs of the class who were around. Uh, how could anyone think that I was valuable? And I think people have that kind of feeling about the idea in the Bible that God has chosen us for his purposes. We think to ourselves, well, there's nobody, uh, there's nothing particularly special about me. There's nobody who would particularly want me on their team. And we find it very difficult to get hold of this idea that God chose us for a purpose. Uh, but here in this letter, at the end of the passage that Sue read for us, it said, He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, and he has brought us, transferred us, into the kingdom of the Son he loves. 
That word transfer nowadays is used about the millions of pounds that are paid uh, for top class footballers to be moved from one team to another. And the same image is true of what God has done for us. God thinks that we are valuable and precious. And he has paid a big transfer fee, namely the death of his son, for us so that we could belong to his team rather than to the opposition. In the time that Paul was writing, this idea of kingdoms uh, was well understood. The Roman Empire had citizens in it. You could become a citizen of the Roman Empire, and if you did, it was worth having. There were lots of privileges that were yours, uh, which Paul used, for instance, uh, when uh, the authorities threatened to cast him into prison without a trial. Do they think they can do that to a Roman citizen? And it says in the Acts of the Apostles uh, that the governor was afraid when he heard that Paul was a Roman citizen, uh, and they sent an apology and a delegation to the prison begging their pardon before they let them out. Uh, in just the same way, uh, you could be a slave or a free person uh, in the Roman Empire. You could be a citizen or an also run. Uh, in just the same way, you can be a citizen of God's kingdom. You can be transferred to the kingdom of God. How do you get transferred? Well, earlier on, uh, it says, uh, the gospel that has come to you, you've heard about in the word of truth, and it's been bearing fruit and growing just among, as it has been doing among you uh, when you heard it from Epaphras. The good news of Jesus' death for us had been going around the Roman Empire, and these people in Colossae had heard of it, and it had made an amazing difference to them when they had welcomed Jesus into their hearts and when they had discovered that they were part of his kingdom. Paul says uh, that it makes a difference to their purpose in life. He says they have got faith and hope uh, and love and the faith and the love have sprung from the hope which is within them. Uh, they've made a practical difference in the way uh, that they have cared for the people around them in Colossae so that their fame has become known and these things have sprung from the fact that they have a new relationship with God and a new assurance of being in his favour forever. And down the ages many people have discovered that if we have a certainty about knowing where we're going and what our purpose is in life then it translates into an active life full of uh, outreach and good things and ways in which we can enrich the others and be a blessing to them and it makes a massive difference. In our history uh, in Britain uh, it's been shown by things like the church being involved in the planting of schools uh, and in the increase of literacy, in the preservation of culture in the Middle Ages and of course in the modern day by the rise of such things as food banks, many of which have got kind of religious origins. Uh, these things uh, have come because of the fact that the people who do them are convinced of their worth in the sight of God and it flows out into their lives. And you too can have it for yourself. You can be transferred from the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of the Son whom Jesus loves. And if you do, then you have redemption, you have been bought at a price and you have the forgiveness of sins. You have a clear conscience and uh, an open journey to heaven for you. For this reason, uh, we never stop praying for you, says Paul, uh, that we can ask God to fill you with all of the knowledge of his will. Uh, there are many people uh, who are not sure what the next phase of their life will bring and are not sure what their purpose and goal is in life. And I can't answer that question for you in a sermon. In fact, uh, as I will undoubtedly uh, retire in the next few years, as I'm getting towards that age, I don't know what uh, the next phase of my own earthly life will be. Uh, but we can face the future with confidence, uh, says Paul, because of the fact that we know where we're going uh, and uh, we can pray for others uh, that this sense of knowing where they're going, this sense of understanding God's will 
and being able to translate it into practical things in our own lives will increase and grow. Uh, let's make sure uh, that we pray for that for ourselves and also for others. And notice one more thing about the idea of being part of a kingdom. It's a corporate thing. Uh, it means uh, that we function best as being part of a team. It means that we need the support and help of others, and it means that we can be a support and a help to them. Don't neglect meeting together, as is the habit of sons, says the writer to the Hebrews. Uh, well, you can imagine that Paul would have written that here as well. Uh, you are transferred to the kingdom, to the team of Christ and you have a role in it. Don't neglect that uh, and make sure that you play your part in encouraging and strengthening others. So let us declare ourselves in our intentions and beliefs to be part of God's kingdom. Uh, let's use these words, which are the words of the Apostles' Creed put together many years ago uh, for this purpose of being able to nail our colours to the mast. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So that's the end of the second of these three videos, and to follow us into the third, where we sing and we pray, please just choose it when it appears on the screen after I finish speaking, and we'll see you there.